Ja. My name is Apostle Joseph Helen, coming to you live from Nanuki, Kenya. Like I mentioned to you yesterday, we are at the foot of the highest mountain in Kenya. It's called Mount Kenya, a beautiful place, beautiful town. I think it soon should be a city, very well developed, clean, amazing with all the infrastructure if we never want. It's an amazing place. We are in a country home. I'm telling you, nice and serene, beautiful, I tell you. We thank God. We continue to celebrate Christmas. You know, sometimes I wish I could celebrate Christmas every single day of the year. Yeah, but of course, for logistical purposes, for administrative purposes, it behooves all of us to go back to work and create more money for more celebrations. <laughs> Glory to Jesus. Uh, I've got with me Mr. Bula. My great musician, he's got a certain percussion instrument there. <laughs> yeah, the man is innovative. And <laughs> what is that called? Where I come from, we call this Endeku. Endeku. <laughs> Endeku. Is that because of the kind of sound he produces? <laughs> I haven't figured that out yet. Uh -huh. Then he also has his saxophone. I don't know how he's going to incorporate the two. But he's our creative director, so he knows his thing. You know, God has given him that grace. And I thank God so much for him. Of course, we have Mr. Nzomo as well, behind the cameras, uh, handling all the media stuff for us and the graphics and the like. We are so grateful. Uh, my wife is somewhere sorting out certain things for us so that by the end of the life, we, we can be fed too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the children are with her somewhere in a, a, the hallowed precinct of the, um, um, what do you call it? The hallowed precinct of that place where nourishment is dispensed. <laughs> if I may put this that way. All right, glory to God. So we're going to sing probably a cappella, uh, but now that there is a percussive instrument, I don't know if that's still a cappella. <laughs> <laughs> you know, music has its own rules. But there's this song that we did during Christmas. Lord, we rejoice and we celebrate you. It's, it's about the birthday of Jesus Christ. Lord, we rejoice and we celebrate you, King who was born to save. Yeah. Came to the earth, the word of salvation, King who was born to save. Lord, we rejoice and we celebrate you, King who was born to save. Came to the earth, the word of salvation, King who was born to save. It's your, it's your birthday today. Let the let of people rejoice. On a, on a Christmas of With a weather eyes fixed on you It's your, it's your birthday today Let a lot of people rejoice On a, on a Christmas of With a weather eyes fixed on you Lord, we rejoice and we celebrate you King who was born to save Came to the earth, the word of salvation, King who was born to say. We rejoice, Lord, we rejoice, and we celebrate you, King who was born to say. Came to the earth, the word of salvation, King who was born to say. It's your, it's your birthday today. Let a lot of people rejoice. Honor, honor, 
Christmas. Oh, with a with a raspberry on you. It's your it's your birthday today. Let a lot of people rejoice on a on a Christmas of hope. With a with a raspberry on you. At least they were able to get the word. Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful. I can see Evelyn Kavaya is online saying, tune in. God bless you, my dear. All right, guys, invite your friends so that we can carry on with the, our topic for tonight. I want to teach you how to understand scriptures. It's Tuesday, and on Tuesdays we do prophecy and interpretation of dreams. So prepare your dreams, but in the meantime, I want to teach you how to understand scriptures. I get asked this question very many times, Mr. Buddha. Yes. That how come you know so much scripture? And how come you know exactly what it says? Mm -hmm. uh, often when people ask me questions, I'll tell them this particular book, chapter this, verse that says, which is precisely the answer mm -hmm. that they're looking for. And uh, most people just wonder, how is that done? So I want to explain how it's done. Mm -hmm. yeah? and, and I want to make it as simple as possible. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to bring to your attention the fact that the Word of God is not literature. The Word of God is not a scientific journal. It's not a scientific book. It's not something that somebody did research on and then came up with an opinion about or some conclusion. Mm -hmm. The Word of God is not just a human writing. It's not a historical book. No, yes, there's history in the Bible, but the Word of God is not a history book. Mm -hmm. The Word of God is life. It's like food that you eat. Mm. Food is not history. It's something you need now for nutrition. You can't say, oh, the history of this water. It, you can tell us about where you got your wells. Like the wells that Jacob mm -hmm. dug for the Israelites and the Samaritans. In the book of uh, John chapter 4, where the Samaritan woman met Jesus. Yeah. It was a place called Sychar, and there's a well there that Jacob dug for them. Mm. So this Samaritan woman had a good history of how the well was dug. But you can't give the history of water because you just need to take it and drink it. Yeah. Yeah? The Word of God is like that. The Word of God is like water that you drink, food that you eat. So you can't go saying, well, we invented this water mm. or we invented this food. No scientist has ever invented food mm. or water. You can take water and mix it up with things to come up with Coca-Cola, for example. Mm. And say, oh, we are the inventors of Coca-Cola. But the ingredients, like the water, mm. and any other thing you put in is a natural thing. Mm. You see? So the Word of God is that original ingredient that is God himself. Because God is the source of life. So he is the Word. So if you read the Bible as if to get information, you've missed it. If you read the Bible as if to get history of what happened during creation, you've missed it. If you read the Bible as if to become clever and knowledgeable, you have missed it. Because we don't drink water to be clever and knowledgeable. Though you can drink wine to be drunk. <laughs> you see? Mm -hmm. But one still is water that has been caused to act in a certain way. You can still trace it all the way back to water. Take water out of the ingredient, you have no wine. You mm -hmm. see? So those who read the Bible to become spiritually knowledgeable have missed the point. Those who read the Bible to sound cleverer than others have missed the point. Those who read the Bible to get a qualification, whether it's academic or not, have also missed the point. Mm. The Bible is God's life. Mm. So when you open your Bible and you start reading, you're reading life. Mm. And you have to accept it as life. Mm. So to understand the Bible properly, whether it's Genesis or the book of Numbers, the book of Nahum, Zephaniah, Revelation, the moment you start with the first letter, that first letter is God. In the beginning was the Word, 
and the word was with God, and the word was God. Do you see? So that is John 1 verse 1. Now you may ask again, how are you able to know John 1 verse 1 and all that? Now that comes from study. The old-fashioned academic study. The same way you and I pick up instruments, and when you pick it up, you don't know how to play it. But when you get a bit of a pointer, this is where you put your finger and this is how you blow, and you begin to practice. Given a number of hours, it starts making sense. Yeah. The same, same thing applies to the Bible. Mm. I, I wish people would read it more, but people don't read the Bible as much. Most people just read it on Sunday. Yeah. Well, well, well I guess like you said, yeah. it's a spiritual book. Yes. And people try to read academically or to sound yeah. wise, to sound intelligent. Yeah. So it yeah. gets boring because the Bible is not like that. It's not like a that. spiritual book. Yeah. yeah. It's food. Yeah. So eat it. <laughs> Don't try to impress me with it. <laughs> Understand? Yeah. Imagine me impressing you with my water. Mm. Yeah, even if even if I have bottled water and it's the most expensive in the market, impressing you with it is not going to quench my thirst. Mm. Like, oh man, look at the kind of water I drink. Yeah? I don't drink, you know, the kind of water you guys drink, you know. But the kind of water I drink, what is this thing? A little feather coming on my face, you know. Has uh, Mugwepe seen it? Mugwepe is in Limpopo. He went to the building, so he doesn't have network. <laughs> he told me that. He said, Apostle, I'll catch up when I return to the city where this network. <laughs> Daisy, my dear, God bless you. Happy to see you. We are still in Nanyuki, Kenya, close to Mount Kenya. Beautiful yeah, place, yeah. I tell you. So we are having fun, so much fun. Uh, Mr. Bull has just done a video recording of one of his songs with mm -hmm. Mr. Nzomo here. Mm -hmm. yeah. we, we work while on holiday, yeah. and it's all fun. So anyway, back to the Word of God. If I impress you with my bottle of water, that still will not quench my thirst. Mm -hmm. Neither will it quench your thirst. Yeah. But you may say, wow, I like the way the bottle is designed. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just like carrying a Bible and saying, you know, this is the original Bible that St. Peter's used. Mm -hmm. That still won't help you. <laughs> Even if you were to be given the Bible Jesus read, mm. the one he held in his hand, mm. it still won't help you. Mm. Until you drink the contents of the body, yeah. the water. Mm. When you drink, then your thirst is quenched. So the Word of God is like that. You read it as food. You read it as water. You read it as life. When you have that mindset, the understanding of the Bible becomes easier. And remember, we are dealing in prophecy today. And the Bible says the word of God is the more sure word of prophecy. Mm. So you cannot think that you are great or you are a good student of prophecy if you don't know the word of God. It's the more sure way of prophecy. That means all other ways are not the best. Mm. Mm. Any other way of knowing is not the best way of knowing mm. prophecy. The Bible is the more sure way, the surest way. Okay? In fact, that's in the book of 2 Peter 1 verse 19. Let me just read it for you. It says, we have also a more sure word of prophecy. So, if you want to understand this particular scripture, let me read the verse first. Then I'll start again to explain how to understand scripture based on this verse. 2 Peter 1 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts. Okay, I have read it academically. Mm. Now I want to show you how to feed off this word, how to eat from it. So the first word is we, number two, have. Okay, we have. Mm. Those two words are life. Those two words are food. Those two words are spirit. Those two words are healing. Those two words are God. Mm. You see, the life of God is in those two words. We have. So you have to say, I have. And having said, I have, the Bible says, you, can, you shall only decree a thing, it shall be established unto you. Mm -hmm. So when you say, I have, you have. I've drunk water. Mm -hmm. I can feel I'm drinking the water. Mm -hmm. I have. Also. That means on top of something else. I have also. Mm -hmm. So he was talking about prophecy. Different ways of prophesying, seeing things, seeing visions. Mm -hmm. But he says, we hope we have also. There's something else, guys. Yeah? A more sure word of prophecy. Mm -hmm. So, you guys prophesy by visions, by dreams. You prophesy by feelings. You prophesy by sounds and different codes. Mm -hmm. But there's a more sure word. Just like in First Corinthians 13, he says, let me show you a more perfect way. You have operated in signs and wonders in 1 Corinthians 12, 
First Corinthians 13 tells you, let, let me show you a more perfect way of doing these things. Mm. And the whole, the whole uh, chapter talks about love. Yes. A more sure way, mm. a more perfect way. Mm. So a more perfect way of prophesying is the word of God. So we have also a more sure word of prophecy. prophecy. So prophecy is a word. Mm. It's a more sure way of prophesying, knowing this word. And the word there is logos. So here is where you need to go into the original meanings of these things. Mm. Because of the limited nature of English. Mm. English just says word. But Greek, which has both uh, a letter and numeric value. Mm. Hebrew also has letter and numeric value. Mm. No wonder those are the, the, the languages that are used to write the Bible. Mm. So for the Bible, Aleph, that is the first letter, also has a numeric value. Mm. Yeah? Um, and then Greek as well, Alpha is, you know, the first one. Mm -hmm. Omega is the Z. Mm. Alpha has a numeric value as, as well as a meaning. Mm. So um, when, you, when you look at the Bible closely, you'll find a mirror. Every single word in the Bible is a mirror. If you say, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth, if you turn it into, into numbers, you'll find if it is 3, 7, the other one is 7, 3. So it's a mirror. Mm. There's a line in between and it mirrors what's on this side. Exact mirror copy everywhere. It's to the extent you cannot imagine that any human being could come up with such kind of binary way of thinking. Mm. You see? Mm. But I'm going too deep now. Yeah, I want yeah. to make it simpler. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have so many questions, but I don't think we'll finish the broadcast. <laughs> Ask them. You know, by the way, through questions, people learn much more. Mm. Yeah. Mm. They want to understand the Bible. So I'm teaching them, but I think I went a bit too deep. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I went binary. I went into computing. <laughs> Zeros and ones. And yeah. mirror images. <laughs> okay. So we have. I have. Mm. Not eat. So we personalize the word. Personalize it. Mm. That's how to eat. Mm. Okay? I'm not reading this to be clever. I'm reading this because I'm hungry. Mm. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Mm. They shall be filled. Mm. And because I'm hungry, when the Bible says we have, I say I have also a more sure word of prophecy. I have a more sure word of prophecy. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. I have a more sure word of prophecy. Now you're eating. Mm. You're beginning to understand scripture. Mm. And the Bible says, whereunto you do well that you take heed. In other words, you need to pay attention to it. Mm. So I pay attention to this more sure word of prophecy. You talk like that. The thing about God is that if you speak what he says, you appropriate it. It becomes yours. Mm. If you speak what God says, that which he says becomes yours. Mm. If you say what he says, what you, what you say becomes yours. Mm. Now, in academics, it doesn't work like that. And this is what confuses people. If you say pi r squared, you won't get a tick. You know, <laughs> if you're doing mathematics. Mm. If you merely speak out a formula, mm. then, you know, uh, carbon plus oxygen, you know, in certain molecules, you know, two, two molecules, molecules of, of oxygen, oxygen plus one of carbon gives you carbon dioxide. Okay. Mm. If you just say that, you're not going to pass an exam. <laughs> Which is why people find confessing the word of God somewhat silly. Mm. They think, I need to do something more. And that's why people like suffering. They like to fast. They like to repent things that are painful mm. because they feel like I need to do something for this thing to work. Mm. Uh, do you have to fast for water to work in your body? <laughs> do, you, do, you, <laughs> do you have to fast to fall asleep? <laughs> See things like that. Yeah. yeah. In fact, you won't sleep at all. <laughs> you won't sleep at all. Yeah. I can see people say Hallelujah, glory to God, and she says, very true. So. For the word of God to be activated, for mm. it to work in you, mm. drinking it, eating it, appropriating it, saying it back. But say it in the first person, as if you are God speaking it. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Mm. So you must not say, oh, Father, in Jesus' name, I pray that you bring light. That will not work. Mm. You must say, let there be light, exactly the way God says it. Mm. So if you say we have a more sure word of prophecy, then you say, I have a more sure word of prophecy. And you cannot convince me that I don't. Mm. Yeah, because God is true. And the Bible says I need to pay attention to it. Why? It's a light that shines in a dark place. Oh, what is darkness? When it's dark, you can't see where you're going. Mm. 
Yeah. When it's dark, you can't read. When it's dark, you can't work. And the Bible says this thing shines in darkness. That means when you don't know what to do, and you remember the word, and you speak it, it will bring light. Yes. You'll know what to do. Mm. When you're in a relationship, it's not working. And you wonder what to do. You're in, a, in darkness, relational darkness. Mm. And this word that I already have, mm. which is more sure, as in I can depend on it, mm. will give me light so I'll know what to do in my relationship. Mm. If it is in money, money is just not coming your way. And you're wondering, what shall I do? I need money. Mm. You're in a dark place financially. Mm. And the word begins to shine there. Mm. And suddenly, the same way you spoke, I have, is the same way you start saying, I have money. Mm. You see? Mm. And that statement turns around and actually works for you. For you. Mm. That's a question. Yes. You know, some people might find it um, shallow. Mm -hmm. For example, if, um, if I'm reading the law, yeah. and I'm not able to understand certain clauses yeah. of the Constitution, yeah. Um, as a Christian, mm -hmm. I understand that I understand the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. I understand that if I begin to pray in tongues, mm -hmm. if I begin to read the Word, yeah. then that light mm -hmm. will bring that Word will bring light mm -hmm. to that part of darkness yes. that I'm experiencing. Yes. But um, a heathen will not understand that. Uh -huh. They will say. How do you go reading a Bible mm -hmm. when you want to understand how to read? Mm -hmm. When you want to understand what the Constitution says? Mm -hmm. So to them, that won't make sense. So ah, okay, I get you. A lot of people will think that they have become clever in their own ability and mm -hmm. in their own strength. Mm -hmm. They don't know it's the same light, mm -hmm. according to God's mercy, that is shining in their heart. Mm -hmm. So when they open that legal book, it makes sense. Yes. It lights up. Mm. It's called insight. Yeah. And you cannot have sight without light. Seeing insight mm. means there's light in you. Mm. Insight. Mm. Mm. Yeah? Mm. Sight that is within. Mm. How will you see without light? You cannot say, ah, I see your point now. Mm. <laughs> yeah? Ah, you know, Mr. Mzumu says, I, I what? I, how does he put it? I what? Is it not, he doesn't say, I hear you. Say I, I, see, I, I see you. I see you. Yes, <laughs> exactly. I see you. Yeah. Because he has these lenses through which he sees. <laughs> so this heathen is in darkness. Mm. Yet by God's mercy, He lights up candles in him. Mm. There's a torch. Remember what the Bible says: the, the spirit of a man mm. is the candle of the Lord. Mm that such is the innermost parts of the belly, mm. the spirit of a man, all men, all men. saved or not, have mm. spirit. Mm. But that spirit came from God, not yes. from the devil. Mm. And God uses that as the source of light. Mm. So if you come up with an idea that works, it was the light of God's word, which is what we are reading here, yes. that by his mercy shone in your heart. That's why in Romans chapter 1, he says, they are without excuse. Because the things that are invisible of God are clearly seen in sight, again, light, mm. by those things that are made. Mm. So if you go study dichotomous key, mm. you are studying about animals, you're studying about plants. Mm. The, uh, the very fact that you are able to understand yes. what's going on, mm. that's God. Mm. That's God. Mm. Mm. What you need to do is don't stop there. Seek him. Seek him. Where does this ability to understand come from? You who gave me what to understand, and now I understand and I've invented. Mm. Who are you? Mm. Mm. You can't say it's me. Mm. Yeah? Mm. This thing came from me. Mm. I'm, I'm, I'm bad like that. I'm bad. You know, I'm bad. <laughs> you get that? Mm. And that's what sends people to hell. Yeah. That God in his mercy, without you knowing him, without you following him, mm. just decides, because he loves you, mm. to give you something you didn't have before. Mm. Mm. Tesla decides, we are going, you know, to outer space. He decides cars need to operate without fear. Yeah. Electricity. Mm. Where did that ability come from? When you ask these guys, they can't even tell you where it came from. Yeah. So I just woke up one morning, and like this guy who came up with buoyancy, Eureka, mm. he was sitting in a bathtub, mm -hmm. Some water came and spilled out. And he thought, mm, what if I channeled the water spilling out through a spout and measured its volume vis-a-vis -vis 
my weight mm -hmm. or my volume? Mm -hmm. What would I come up with? How do you get, how do you even think like that without an extra mm -hmm. force mm -hmm. or extra power telling you what to do? Mm -hmm. It's like your instrument there beginning to just play on its own without somebody blowing breath in it and giving it melody that that's a good point when 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 i was in 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 um, in, in the us yeah there are these pianos that play by themselves mm -hmm. like you go to a hotel yeah. and in the lobby is a piano beautiful piano yes and it's playing by itself uh -huh. the keys are actually moving you can see them moving uh -huh. and you wonder the piano is playing itself, uh -huh. but there's someone who actually programmed it Program. to play like that. Insight. Yeah. The piano is obeying what was programmed within it, mm. even though the piano will not even know your name. Mm -hmm. The programmer, it mm. simply does what you program it mm. to do. But the beautiful thing is that God has given you personality, mm. unlike the piano. Mm. So you can question things. Yes. And most people think questioning of things is contrary to godliness. Mm. Yet it's what causes you to meet God. Yeah. Question. How did I know this? Handel's Messiah, the greatest oratorio ever written, the Hallelujah and all those songs. Mm. In fact, they, they get very popular during Christmas mm. time. <laughs> this guy, for over 20 days, just locked himself up mm. and started questioning why he was so amazing in music. He wrote so many great, great pieces of music. And as he questioned, that's when he came up with, I know my Redeemer lives. I know that my Redeemer lives. Mm. He finally got it. Mm. Like, wow, this is where this thing is coming from. Mm. There is God. Mm. I'm told Newton at some point in his life also reached that point. I don't mm -hmm. know how true it is. I've not really done my own research. Mm. Yeah? Yeah? That he finally thought, oh my, there is God. Mm. That's why I know the things I know. Mm. And the moment he connected to God, everything began to make sense. Mm. Have you noticed that most successful people are frustrated in life? They say, after I've made all the money, I've done all the great things, I'm still not feeling satisfied. Yes. Because they missed out on the connection with the source. So you understand scripture by knowing that seeing from within, insight comes from God. Mm. So when I read this, not only am I knowing the word of salvation, mm. but I'll also know how to handle my law, how to handle my uh, biology, mm. how to handle my music, and all the other things. Mm. Now, you may say, but there's somebody who's not a Christian, but is very successful in music. Mm. That's not absolute success, because they are not connected to the source. Yeah. They will rise, plateau, mm. and fall. Mm. But the Bible says those who are planted in the house of the Lord mm. grow without end. Yeah. They are consistent in growth. Mm. They don't go down. Mm. So understanding scripture is as simple as that. Mm. The way you understand mathematics, mm. it's not academic, it's yeah. spiritual. Mm. Then when you write it down and put it on paper, it becomes academic. But it started as a, a spiritual insight. So if you, let me take you to other scriptures. I, I hope that answers you well. Yes, it does. Great. No, no, mm -hmm. um, there, there are people mm -hmm. who are really gifted. Yes. But in their, in their quest for... Uh, for finding the source of their talent, yeah, uh, they end up uh, they end up crediting their abilities to the gods, mm -hmm. uh, some some extraterrestrial beings. Yes, how as a Christian am I supposed to minister for a person like that uh -huh. to help them? get a different perspective mm -hmm. very good question here is a case where a person is already amazing in one aspect of life that means there's light mm -hmm. in their spirit mm -hmm. and they are moving very close to the truth mm -hmm. because they've ascribed it to a god mm -hmm. but their problem is that they've stopped there why mm -hmm. did you stop there why can't you investigate further mm -hmm. yeah. you'll find that that which you thought was a god is also created by another one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Investigate until you reach the end. When you reach the end, the Bible says your thirst will be quenched. Mm. That desire for more is satisfied. But you find these guys are still looking. Yeah. So they think, okay, let me go to the Indian culture. I might find it there. Mm. Okay, let me try African culture. Mm. Let me try the uh, Japanese culture. Let me try this, Buddhist. Egyptian. Let me try uh, Christianity. Let me try, but the Christianity is not even Christian. <laughs> <laughs> 
Jesus was not a Christian. Now I see why they call you the controversial. <laughs> If somebody asks, are you a Christian? I'm a child of God. There's nothing Christian about that. Christianity was an insult. <laughs> the first people to call the followers of God Christians, call them that to jest at them, to yeah. insult them. Yeah. And it stuck. Just the same way the Israelites called manna, what is this? Mm -hmm. And the name stuck, what is this? What are you eating? I'm eating, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> so Christianity is not... It's not Christianity. <laughs> you see, but we've got to investigate further. You now know a God gave it to you. And by the way, every time somebody goes to the highest level, whether it's music or science or what, they will always ascribe it to a God. Yes. But the problem is that they settle there before their thirst is quenched. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They shall be filled. Mm. It's like me smelling food and saying, yes, it's food for real. It smells like chicken for real, but I don't get to eat it. Mm. So this is where most of these guys reach. A point where they are so close to the source of the spirit yes, and they stop. Mm. Like, I think I'm satisfied. No, but I still feel hungry. So satisfy your hunger mm. by asking more questions. Mm. It's a simple ask. If you exist, reveal yourself to me. Mm. How oh, God answers a prayer so fast. <laughs> Who is it that created this thing that I do? Can you reveal yourself? Mm. Now, if the devil shows up, the devil never created it. Mm. So he'll lie to you and you'll catch him. Mm. Yeah. The devil will easily make mistakes. He'll be inconsistent and you'll say, no, you didn't create this thing. Mm. But God will be consistent. And the deeper you go, the deeper he goes with you. Mm. The, the more questions you ask, the more answers he gives. The devil will not answer all your questions. That's why he's strict and harsh. Mm. To scare you to stop asking any further questions. Mm. Do you know how when we grew up, uh, our parents, if they didn't have an answer, they'd either chase you out of the room or scare you. The devil acts like that too. <laughs> you ask me too many questions, go and play outside. <laughs> that means I don't know the answer. <laughs> You see, but God will answer you. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. He will answer you. If you keep asking, I like Ellie. I mean, um, yes, I like Ellie, but I was talking about Samuel. Samuel was called. Mm. Samuel, Samuel. He didn't stop there saying, ah, yes, the gods are calling me now. Yes, my great ancestor. <laughs> great ancestor. <laughs> Speak to me. I'm the lion of this particular tribe. <laughs> you know, <laughs> He went to an authority and asked, hey, did you call me? Yeah. And the man said, no, I didn't call you. And then the word came again. This is how scientists invest in, you know, in, invent things. An idea just comes to them. What if you did this? What if you did that? You must question, where did it come from? So Samuel investigates three times until Ellie says, you know, the, the way he's calling you, it could be God. So why not say, next time you hear him call, why not say speak? Your servant is listening. As soon as he did that, God spoke to him and his thirst was quenched. The beautiful thing about God is this. You stop searching the moment he reveals himself. Mm, mm. If he hasn't, you keep searching and searching. Mm. But when you meet him, you go, now I know him. Mm. Now I know the source. When things are difficult, I know where to go. When I've messed up, I know where to go. Mm. When I'm rejected, I know where to go. Mm. When things have failed, I know where to go. Mm. But in the world, before you meet him, if you fail, you want to commit suicide. Yeah. If you are rejected, if your marriage fails, you, you want to die. Mm. But in, in knowledge of God, you feel like I have a source. I'm never lost. There's insight. There's light. Mm. A light that shines in darkness. Until the Bible says the day dawn and the day start arising in your heart. Mm. Until it's morning. This dark part of your marriage becomes morning again. Mm. The sun starts rising on it again. This area of your physical health that was so difficult to handle, you are feeling so sick, almost about to die. The sun rises upon your health again and you are able to see the light of day mm. again mm. because you are able to seek God. And all of it is in the world. You, you'll find out and appreciate that the most successful people on the face of the earth who traced the source of their knowledge all ended up in the Bible. Mm. The guy who introduced me to deliverance and the kind of ministry that now I'm so involved in is called Dr. Stephen Bathai. He went to heaven many years ago. This guy was in spiritism. 
you know, masonry and things like that. That's, mm. that's where he was. Mm. So he took the Bible and said, this is a re religious book like any other. Mm. So he read it from Genesis Revelation. He was a man who was given to reading. He loved to investigate, a medical doctor. Mm. So they're used to experimentations and yeah. all that. And he said, I was reading the Bible looking for a, re a religion. By the end of it, I found a relationship. Mm. I found a friend. I found the author somebody I could talk to. Mm. He could answer back. If I asked questions, he would show me the answer. Mm. Do you know that's how he got saved? Wow. All by himself. All alone. And he just said, Lord Jesus, I finally found you. You are real. You exist. Mm -hmm. I questioned you because he's, he was one of the greatest medical doctors, a gynecologist. Mm -hmm. Highly skilled. You know, recognized as a highly skilled person. Great scientist. Then he said, for once I investigated and found a real author. Mm -hmm. And he said, now that you have shown me that you can actually live in my heart, so that this light is actually resident in me, come in. All by himself. So what if the scientists did the same thing? What if us musicians did the same thing? What if great athletes did the same thing? What if great agriculturalists did the same thing? If they said, you on you, where did you come from, honestly? I like the smell of you, but I want to know your beginning. Where did you originate from? How can you eat soil and turn into onion for me to eat? How do you get those minerals and how do you know this is the right mineral to enter me for me to be an onion? Mm. You, are, you must be intelligent. Mm. Yeah? Why don't you go for something else? Charcoal. Why does it have to be nitrogen? You know, you know all those great things that you find in the soil. Mm. Why? Who told you to do that? Who programmed you like this? I know this computer was programmed by Steve Jobs. I know that. Mm. I know this Steve Jobs was. You see? Mm. Now, when I, of course, Steve Jobs is no longer alive, but if you met him, then you need to ask, who programmed you to program this thing? Mm. And that's how you meet God. Mm. So when you read the Word of God, have that mindset. It's life, and it's light, and it's food, and it's water. It quenches your thirst. So if the Word of God says, the soul that sins, it shall die, it's not intended for you. Mm. No. It's not intended for you. Anything negative written in the Bible is not food, it's poison. Mm. That's why the Bible says the letter of the law kills. Mm. It will kill you. Mm. So if you don't understand the Bible properly, if it is promising punishment, that's not yours. Mm. If it is promising life, satisfaction, healing, prosperity, mm. then that's yours. Mm. So people miss it when they go for what, is, what was written for the devil, that mm. is demons. Mm. Instead of going for what's written for them. Remember, eternal life is not eternal damnation. That's what we get in the Bible. Yeah. You see, mm. if people follow it this way, oh, somebody tell me the screen is not showing. Can we just check? It's on. It's, it's on. on? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. Okay, Jathan, can you check your, your gadget? Yeah? Check your gadget and see. Glory to Jesus. But he's the only one who said it. Yeah, so just make sure, but I think you're yeah. good. We are good, yeah? Mm. Okay. Yeah. Ah, perfect. Jetham, you're on, all right? Maybe you, yours is just buffering or something. Mm. So don't buff it yourself when it's buffering. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we are serving a buffet. <laughs> a buffet. <laughs> Pronunciation doesn't matter. What matters is the meaning. He's baffled. <laughs> He's baffled. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Are you baffled like a baphomet? <laughs> oh man, I enjoy wordplay. <laughs> okay, I hope you guys are understanding how to understand the Bible. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a few more scriptures. You've asked very good questions, by the way. Mm -hmm. So, we have the word. I have the word. It is a more sure word. It is light. It shines in any place that's dark. Mm -hmm. Okay? Until the day dawn. Until it's no longer darkness, I'm seeing the light of day. Mm -hmm. In other words, people say, your idea will not see the light of day. In other words, it won't succeed. Mm -hmm. But mine is seeing the light of day. The day is dawning. Mm -hmm. Until the day star rises, his name is Jesus. Mm -hmm. He arises in your heart. 
so that when you speak, it's him speaking. And if he's speaking through you, you can't fail. Mm -hmm. Yeah? You can't fail. Uh, Rodna says, praise God, my beautiful people. Love you guys a whole lot. We love you too, my dear. Hi, look, Rona. look who I got. <laughs> look who I got on set. Yeah, your uncle. Who has an uncle this young? <laughs> Jaja. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So, uh, Rona says, I'm so glad I made it here. Praise Jesus. We love you. You're just amazing. You're teaching how to understand the word of God. Yeah. It's difficult for people. Now, let me take you to the next scripture. You mentioned something mm -hmm. that, um, that w when I was going through a, a difficult time, yeah. I went and read the, uh, the book of Psalms. Mm -hmm. And in the book of Psalms, there's a place where David mm -hmm. was just making negative confessions. <laughs> yes. So when I read that, uh, I began to feel like that is, that is where I'm really headed. Uh -huh. Because I didn't have the revelation mm -hmm. of what you just said. Yeah, that's what's that not intended for it, me. Uh, that was not intended for me. Yeah. But when I read those things, I was depressed even more. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So that I'm reading the Bible and I'm getting depressed. And uh -huh. the Bible is supposed to give me life. It's supposed to give you life. Yeah. Because you didn't understand mm. the audience. You are not the audience that time. Mm. In fact, I know the scriptures you are reading, but it's Psalm 69. Mm. If you keep going on, and then Psalm 109, mm. he just talks about all these negative things. Mm. But you know, he was talking about um, Judas Iscariot. That Psalm was written for Judas Iscariot. Mm. When Jesus was hanging on the tree, he also quoted the very Psalm as he talked about Judas Iscariot. Mm. So you see, the guy it was written for really went to the place it was intended to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see? Yeah. Yeah. Jathan still asking many green question marks. Jethan, can you just restart your gadget if it's a laptop or reboot? Okay? Reboot or if it is your phone, just restart it. And you'll see clearly everything is okay. Yeah? It's, it's going like this. <laughs> Which in the prophetic realm means what's going on. <laughs> and I'm not seeing anything. That's my interpretation of your dream. <laughs> okay, you guys, can you type your dreams? I'm waiting for your dreams as well. Uh, Okay, he says he can't see anything. <laughs> Other people are seeing, Jada. Can you just restart your computer or your phone? Yeah? Restart it. Reboot. Alright? Glory to God. So, um, if you read Psalm 69, you'd mm. think, wow, David was having it rough. Mm. But David was a prophet. So the things that were happening in his life were indicative of things that would happen to Jesus. Mm. So he was writing a script for Jesus to use to conquer the grave. Yeah. You see? Mm -hmm. So those things were relevant to David and relevant to Jesus, but irrelevant to you. Yes. Yeah? So please understand, when reading the Bible, that there are scriptures written for Satan and his demons. Mm -hmm. And there are scriptures written for the Pharisees. Jesus called them a brood of vipers, whitewashed tombs. Mm -hmm. you, that is not you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. There are there are scriptures written for holy angels mm. and fallen angels. And not all scripture was spoken by God. Because in the Bible, there's a time a donkey spoke. Mm. And that donkey is still not speaking to you. The donkey just spoke to Balaam, <laughs> full stop. <laughs> and the Bible declared Balaam as a mad prophet. You're not a mad prophet. <laughs> so you don't need a donkey talking to you. <laughs> you see, in the same scripture, a snake spoke mm. to Eve mm. quite eloquently. Mm. So that snake is not speaking to you. That snake spoke to Eve. Mm. <laughs> All right? So those statements the snake made are not statements of faith for you. That's not food for you. That's death. Because yes. as soon as the snake stopped talking, Eve and Adam and Eve got a death sentence. So who wants to die? I don't want to die. Because <laughs> I'm not going to listen to that stuff. <laughs> you see? Mm. So understand the audience God is talking to. Understand the audience the snake is talking to. The audience the that donkey is talking to, understand the audience that trees are talking to, <laughs> and the mountains and the hills. Mm. At some point, Jesus Christ said, if you people don't cry out, the stones will do it. Mm. So who is the stone talking to? You or what? So get to know the audience. Yeah? And if the Bible says, we have, that's us. Mm. So I'll take it as mine. Yeah? If the Bible says, you are damned, woe unto you. Ah! Mm. Woe unto who? No. Not me. Mm. What if I've made a mistake? It's still not me. Mm. 
Because my mistake is the reason Jesus died on the cross. Mm. There is already a, remed a remedy. There's a way out. Mm. So my fault does not make me a candidate of woe unto you. Mm. So people don't get the word because they mix themselves up with all those things. Yeah. Oh, it's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the Lord. <laughs> I'm not going to fall into his hand. I am his hand. <laughs> God's hand for healing is mine. He said, if I lay hands on the sick, they mm. shall recover. Mm. I'm his hand, so I'm not falling into his hand. Mm. So there's nothing to fear of God in that way. It's a fear for the God is a consuming fire. Ah, do I look like fear? <laughs> that's supposed to be burnt. <laughs> I'm his hand. In fact, when I speak, that's the tongue of fire that he uses to do his work. Mm. So I'm completely safe when it comes to negatives in the Bible. Mm. With that, the Bible will make sense. You'll be interested in reading it. You'd be excited about investigating it. You say, ha ha, some you are the devil. You see, <laughs> the hell was created for Satan and his angels. Mm. And Satan and his angels, they were cast into hellfire. Mm. Then hell also has eternal fire mm. that is prepared for it. Mm. So hell is somewhere waiting to be burnt into the, the lake of fire. Yes, there's a lake waiting for hell. <laughs> and you'll not find me there. It doesn't matter how inconsequential you think I am. Mm. doesn't matter how messed up you think I am. Mm. I know my identity. Mm. I'm a child of God. Mm. And no good parent casts their child into fire. Mm. They'd rather go into the fire itself. That's why God decided to die in our place. Yeah. He'd, rather, he'd rather he died mm. instead of us dying. Yeah. So why would he do that on the cross and then later at the end of the age turn around and cast you to hell? So who then goes to hell? The one who's decided to follow the devil. Mm -hmm. You see, uh, Godwin Aki says, Amen, good to share the understanding of God's work. Hallelujah. So if you look at um, 2 Timothy 3.16, let me read it for you. The Bible says, all scripture is given by inspiration of God. All scripture, all scripture, is everything in the Bible scripture? No. <laughs> Not everything is inspired by God in the Bible. Mm. <clears throat> Some were inspired by demons. Gadarin demoniac spoke. An evil spirit spoke. Was that inspired by God? No. Was that the breath of God? That was the breath of an evil spirit. Mm. And Jesus promptly cast it out and he could no longer speak after that. Mm. You see? So all scripture, all scripture, all writing intended for you is inspired of God and is profitable. If it is not profitable, it's not going to work for you. Mm. So if you read, for example, uh, let his wife be a widow and let the children be orphans. And when he's judged, let him be found guilty. Is that profitable? No. So that's not for you. <laughs> Do you see? It's not for you. What is one to say? Uncle Buddha, very nicely explained apostle, was reading scriptures today that almost made me question God's love. I ah, see. Your questions are good. Yeah. If it makes you question God's love, it's intended for something God doesn't love. To help. If you completely reject this, then God has no choice. Mm. Because he's also respectful of your will. Mm. He created you with a free will. The, what makes God God is that he doesn't control you. Mm. What makes idols non-gods is that they are controlling. <laughs> they are too weak to free you. Mm. If you want to find that somebody has power, genuine power, it's when they free people. If you want to know someone is weak, there are very many rules and regulations that you dare not break. That's mm. weakness. That's why Jesus said, I didn't give you the law. It was given to you by Moses. Mm. He said it. Mm. I didn't give you the law. That was Moses. Mm. Uh -huh. What then did he, mean, did he mean by not one letter shall, shall be, you know, uh, blotted out of the, out of the law and uh, all uh, that. What, what did he mean by that? You see, any, only what he in, what he breathes out. If God breathes something out, that thing is alive forever. You can't erase it. Mm -hmm. If you erase it, it means you're killing God because he's the word. You see, they tried killing him. He remained alive. Three days later, you're still alive. So you see, you cannot erase what God has breathed because all scripture is God breathed and the word was with God and the word was God. So if he is what he says, then how can you remove it? It's like removing God out of his place. 
But you've got to find out, is it really God who said that thing? Mm. If he didn't say that, it can be changed. Like the law was spoken by Moses. A lower level of the revelation of who God is. Mm. When Jesus appeared, he told us exactly what God wanted to say. Mm. Yeah. That's so, so the tablets didn't represent what God was really trying no. to communicate. It was a lower level of the introduction of who God was. Mm. Like when you go to school and they use apparatus to teach you how to count. Mm. It's a lower level of knowledge. Mm. It reaches a point where if you're told uh, 11, times, 11 times 13, you just say 143. Mm. Because there's something in your head that wraps itself around understanding. Mm. But if you are still using apparatus, then you'd have to arrange 11, 43 times. <laughs> I mean, 11, what? 13 times. Mm. A longer, more painful method. That's what the law was. <laughs> Do you see? Yeah, 11, okay. 11, 11, 13 times. Mm. But if, you, if you've grown mm. into mathematical grace, 11 times 13, take 1 and then put 3 at the end and then add 1 and 3 and you get 4, 143. Mm. Yeah. I add the 2, then I get the middle number and I take the two numbers and put them on extreme ends. Apostle, that's not my grace. Yeah. It's a, I, I will play my saxophone. <laughs> play me a melody, man. Just play me a melody. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Rona says Jesus died and rose again, hence my sins are forgiven. God has an all season love for me. Precisely. So even if you make a mistake, Jesus already sorted that out. Don't go back to it. Mm. You know, in, uh, in legal terminology, there's something they call double jeopardy. That is, uh, suffering twice for the same mistake. Mm. Even in the fallen world that does not know God, that's unacceptable. Mm. You cannot be punished twice for the same offense. Mm. Now, if you believe in Jesus, you are accounted as having been crucified with him. Mm. The benefit of believing in Jesus is that you are accounted to have been crucified too mm. with him. Mm. So, if you make any mistake right now, God looks at you and sees, I punished this guy already on the cross for mm. this thing. So God is so powerful that even if out of your own rebellion you decide I'm just going to do whatever I like, mm. he still sees you as a person who was crucified for those very same things. Mm. So he can't punish you because it's double jeopardy. I already mm. punished this guy. So what is it that makes us not do what is wrong? By understanding that it doesn't matter how bad I am, God is not going to punish me. He already did. Mm. It doesn't matter how good I am, God is not going to clap for me because I was already so bad. <laughs> you see? Mm. So what should I do? Just believe in me. Eat this thing. I've served the food. Mm. Oh, but I stole something early this morning. But you're hungry. It's lunch time. Eat. Mm. I found that a bit confusing. Uh -huh. That um, that you know the Bible says, um, seek first the kingdom of God and His righteousness, and all those things shall be added unto you. Yeah. But again, it says, mm. you know, that our righteousness is like. Our righteousness mm -hmm. is like filthy rags to him. Yes. So I try to do good, uh -huh. and my good is like filthy, filthy rags to him. Yes. And yes. then when I do bad, uh -huh. I'm supposed to seek righteousness. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know. Uh -huh. So how do you? By the way, the answer is right there in the first scripture. Mm. Seek ye first the kingdom of God, mm. and what type of righteousness? His. Whose? God's. Whose? God's. Then what did he say about yours? It's as filthy as rags. Mm. You see the difference? Mm. <laughs> so we need to read slowly. Slowly! <laughs> <laughs> How do you say it Uganda? Mpola Mpola. Mpola Mpola. 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 Ah, Quite similar. Mpola Mpola. <laughs> read Mpola Mpola. Say go. <laughs> do you see? Yeah. Don't make assumptions mm. because this is life. Mm. In life, every letter, the, all the T's, are, the crossing of the T mm. and the dotting of an I means something. Mm. So seek ye first the kingdom of God, God. and his, his righteousness. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And then everything becomes yours. Mm. So what is his righteousness? His righteousness is his ability to be right. Mm. Yeah. The fact that God cannot go wrong, that's what you're supposed to seek. But let me take you deeper. Mm. He spoke that to those who are not saved. Mm. Those who are under the law. They were seeking. Mm. To those who are saved, 
he said the kingdom of God is already within you. Mm. So you don't seek it anymore. Mm. You manifest it. Mm. If the kingdom is in you, then his right ways of doing things are also in you. Mm. So practice that. It's like the way God um, designed you with music inside, not outside. Mm. So the work of a teacher was to provoke it yeah. and to give it direction. Mm. So you already are a righteous person. My work as a minister is to provoke that righteousness and give it direction. Mm. Then I'll tell you, practice that. Mm. Practice saying sorry. Mm. You can. Mm. It's already wired in you. Mm. Okay. I didn't want to, but I'm sorry. Mm. If you do that long enough, you'll find it so easy to say sorry because yeah. you are naturally mm. a righteous guy. Mm. <laughs> do you see? Mm. So people think, okay, if I'm righteous, why do I still do wrong things? Well, if you're musical, why do you still get wrong notes? <laughs> because of lack of practice. practice. Mm. It's in you, but for it to manifest, mm. practice it. Mm. Practice it. Evelyn says, yes, true. One plus one is equal to zero. One plus one is equal to two. What? Wow. Powerful. <laughs> Glory to God. All right, Ron has a dream. I wish you could. This is so nice. I wish you could just carry on with this. Yeah. yeah. Can I read for you a few more scriptures then I, I interpret your dream? So all scripture is God breathed and is profitable. Mm. For what? Only what God has breathed can be used for doctrine. Doctrine is a teaching, like a syllabus. Mm. For reproof, reproof is to be corrected, to be brought back to the right place. Mm. So you, you veered off and you read and you realize, oh, I'm going off. Let me get back to, like a, a pilot. He looks at his instrument. He realizes I'm off course. So scripture is what brings you back to course. Mm. Now, most people, when they're wrong, feel so horrible. But a pilot feeling horrible about being off course doesn't help. Mm. What will help that pilot is please go back to the airline. Mm. The line that was given to you, the path you're supposed to follow. Otherwise, you plus all the people you've carried are dead. <laughs> so this correction is good for you. Mm. It's not a punishment. Mm. It rescues you. Mm. Some people think, oh my goodness, God is going to strike me with thunder. I did something wrong. I lied. I, I coveted. No, you realize you coveted. Come back to the line. Mm. Scripture will bring you back. Mm. When you read it, you find you're coming back. And the Bible says, uh, for what? Correction. Yeah? Correction is, I did mathematics, and the teacher put an X. And he told me, go and do it again. And then I did it and got it right. Mm. That's correction. And instruction. Instruction is, I want you to go from Nanyuki to Nairobi. Mm. And you'll find money there. Um, somebody's waiting for you there with money. If you follow my instructions, you'll get the money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you see? But most people are just thinking, if you go, if you follow my instructions, you'll be burnt in hell over there. So some people feel it's, there's no point being a Christian. This guy will burn me anyway. Mm. <laughs> you know, because I'm making mistakes all the time. But God is not, God is not insecure about your mistakes. Mm. Because being life himself and being food himself, mm. being water himself, mm. he's able to feed you until all those mistakes are corrected. Mm. So if the control tower that operates with signals that talks to the pilot, if they are on top of their job and they know what they're doing, and the pilot also knows how to operate the plane, mm. then we should be assured that, that plane will land where it's supposed to land. Mm. Even if it gets lost, as long as communication continues, mm. you can navigate that plane back to safety. Mm. The reason most planes crash is that we've lost signal. Mm. We've lost communication. We cannot get a direct guy anymore. Mm. We've lost communication. But when you are born again, when the Spirit of God is in you, you cannot lose communication. Yeah. Even if you go as far as what? He'll bring you back. Mm -hmm. Because he has the instrument. And since he's wired you with the ability to know what to do, he'll bring you back. So, don't kick yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, in school, yeah. um, you do a number of uh, course units. Yes. And you're supposed to pass a certain threshold yeah. for you to graduate. Yeah. But you'll find that people who study hard and try hard and study and try hard mm -hmm. but are not able mm -hmm. to meet the requirement. Yeah. Now, we refer back to the Word of God. Mm -hmm. um, uh, from what I know, yeah. one of the prerequisites for, for being able to get into heaven mm -hmm. is bearing fruit. Mm -hmm. Those who fail to bear fruit. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's bad I, I get you here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, how can you fail to bear fruit 
when you've eaten what produces food. That's like saying a woman is fertile. Mm. She not want to have sex with anybody, but she's fertile. Mm. So she has sex anyway. How can she fail to conceive, even if she did want to? Mm. Huh? Yet the Bible is also called a sperm, oh. a seed. Mm. If it lands into a willing heart, even if you're not willing, if it lands into an open heart, let me put it like that, mm. it will fertilize that heart. Mm. The moment that the seed is planted in fertile ground, you don't have to do anything anymore mm. for it to bear fruit. Mm. It will grow all by itself. Mm. So this is what you need to get into the word. When you get into it, it will enter you and produce the result without your participation anymore. Mm. Your word is open your heart. That's what we call faith. Believe it. Receive it. Mm. So if you don't bear fruit, it means you blocked that heart a long time ago. Mm. You refuse to read the word of God. You don't want anything to do with the things of God. Mm. So the word is not entering anymore. But that's very difficult. Mm. Do you know why it's difficult? Because what caused you to believe originally is a seed. And the trees of God, the Bible says, they grow without end. Mm. So that one seed you had, 20 years ago, can still rescue you. Mm. Because it will produce fruit. <laughs> you see, mm. the seed was planted, you got saved. This tree is growing without end. It continues to grow. Mm. So even if it's just one tree producing one fruit, God will consider you. Mm. It's difficult to go to hell. It's very, very hard. For, for a human being to go to hell, that person has worked very, very hard. Mm. in rebelling against God mm. and taking his word and trashing it and, and simply refusing anything with love. You just decided, I don't want anything to do with anything good. Mm. It's hard to go to hell. Mm. God tries everything in his wisdom and power to rescue us from hell. When people know these things, then they don't have to go through hard times. Accept the word quickly, mm. easily. Yeah. So you bear fruit any moment you hear the word of God. Yeah, you see, people think bearing fruit is winning a thousand or a million people, <laughs> you know, getting them saved. Yeah, that, that's that's a specialist area of doing things. Mm. That's an office. It's an office. Mm. You see, there are some people who get saved by just looking at you. Mm. So I like the way that guy is happy, and that's what will bring conviction upon their hearts, and they actually get saved. Mm. I remember Doctor Steve Mathai who taught me the word initially was reading his Bible in his office and a certain woman came and scoffed at him. Ha! <laughs> you read the Bible? And he said, yeah. Do you read yours? <laughs> no, 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 not me. As she was going home, that word, do you read, kept ringing in her mind. Do you read? Do you read? And as if she was getting haunted. Mm. Do you read? Do you read your Bible? So she went home, trembling, and opened her Bible and began to read it. And she found a place that talked about if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you shall be saved. She got saved. <laughs> Do you see? This seed is so powerful, mm. you don't need to help it. Mm. It's like a man helping his sperm to fertilize an egg. Mm. That, okay, now we've had sex. So, okay, baby, conceive. Conceive, baby. Conceive. There you go. Ha! Hey, con conception. Can we play music for you? <laughs> <laughs> That sperm swims all by itself. Mm. It finds the egg all by itself. It fertilizes the egg all by itself. Mm. Conception happens without any further participation of the man. Mm. Not even of the woman. Mm. So when the word enters your ear and you accept it and it actually lands in your heart, that word will work. Mm. So that's the easiest way to understand the word of God. You see these things are easy. Mm. Mm. The devil is complicated because it's powerless. God is simple because he's powerful. A powerful person makes things easy. A powerless person complicates things so that you don't catch them. You don't catch them. Mm. Yeah? Have, have you noticed some people don't know music? So they hang around musicians and they know how to mime. The way TikTok was, mm -hmm. when it was called musically, people just mime and you think they're the ones singing the song. Mm. Yeah? Until 
maybe the, the electricity is cut in something and you're left with, ah, singing your own <laughs> things. <laughs> and one wonders what the voice I was hearing. <laughs> People who don't know stuff complicate things. Mm. If you know what to do, you make things easy. Like transporting people on a plane. You know how to transport people. So in a few minutes or hours, somebody's in their destination. But the person who doesn't know it will tell you, let's walk to New York. Mm. Yeah, then Jesus returns before you arrive. <laughs> Do you see? Mm. All right, uh, Rhonda, let's, let's interpret Rhonda's dream. She says, Apostle, I dreamt of a certain young cousin of mine that has visited me before, coming again, and this time she wanted to go partying somewhere and wanted to wear a certain pair of my shoes and clothes. But my husband and I strongly stood her ground saying no. And she then left. Strange dream. What does this mean? So your clothes and your shoes. Clothes stand for your righteousness. Uh, again, depending on the color. But generally, clothes stand for righteousness. What covers you? That's what Adam and Eve lost. When they ate the tree and they found they were naked and clothed. Mm. They, they, they were no longer clothed in the righteousness of God. Mm. So they went and brought some twigs and tied around their waist their own righteousness, which mm. never worked. So God slaughtered an animal for them and covered them. God's righteousness again. Mm. <laughs> Do you see? So if you try it on your own, you fail. So your clothes are your righteousness. Your ability to do things right in business, to do things right in marriage, to do things right in spiritual matters, to do things right, 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 right. Yeah? That is your own cloth. So somebody wanting that is, is somebody pretending. It's somebody usurping your authority. So that must be a demon. Wanting to use what is yours for its evil benefits. And now your shoes stand for your preparation, your readiness, your ability to proclaim what is good. That's called shoes. That's why people say it's difficult fitting into your shoes. Your office. Shoes stand for office as well. Okay? So you said no because that was an evil spirit coming to masquerade as you so as to use your authority to do evil things. Because demons cannot work unless authorized by a human being. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I hope you enjoy that interpretation. Evelyn says, Oh Lord, grant me divine knowledge to understand your voice and will. Oh Lord, help my destiny. Okay, now let me help you, Evelyn. That's how they used to pray in the Old Testament. In the New Testament, you say, Lord, I thank you that I have divine knowledge to understand your voice and will. Thank you that you've revealed to me my destiny. Mm. That's how you do it. Eat it. Don't long for it. The food is already served. Mm. Okay? Rhoda says, hey, hey, God's power is not a joke. God saved all right here. Yeah. yeah, she's referring to that fellow <laughs> who got saved anyway. <laughs> you see? So there are people looking at you and they're getting saved. So mm. stop kicking yourself up. This year, just fast and I've not even led anybody to Christ. Get out of guilt and condemnation. When the Bible says there's therefore now no condemnation, where do you get it from yourself? It doesn't exist. Mm. Why are you condemning yourself? All right? Oh, because a preacher said you need to go out there and win souls. Yes, you need to. But everybody has a very unique way of winning souls. Mm. So winning souls the way I do is trying to be like me. Yet God wants you to be like you. Mm. You can play your instrument and get so many people saved without saying a word. Mm. So just play your instrument. It's much easier, isn't it? Yeah. And much more effective. Mm. Yeah? <laughs> Rona says, power cuts expose us. Yeah? When you're doing karaoke and, and, and you're singing over somebody else's voice, <laughs> and then the DJ decides, stop the music. <laughs> it's gonna be love, but it's all now. <laughs> On the microphone. <laughs> Absalom, he says, my brother, you're full of wisdom, true testimony. God bless you. That's actually, it's, how do I call you? My brother or my who? We come from the same family. It, Absalom. On mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I don't know how to describe our relationship. Yeah. His grandfather was my father's brother. So how, how, mm -hmm. do, how do you? His, his grandfather mm -hmm. was my father's brother. So his grandfather is my stepfather. So he's your brother. So he's my brother. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow. It's difficult to. It's, so you you better tell me. Ask somebody who's you know from home to explain to us how we relate. 
but we call each other brothers. Yeah. yeah. Oh. I mean, I think I think in in African uh, settings, yeah, we have similarities. So yeah. my 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 son mm -hmm. is my grandmother's son. Ah. Yes, I get it. You get I get it. it. Yes, it's it's very spiritual. Really. Yeah. I get it. So he's my brother. So we call each other that. Yeah. My brother, my yeah. brother. Yeah. Ah, great. So Absalom is my brother. God bless you. Rona says the shoes were black, man of God. Black stands for revelation. Remember, light shines in a dark place. Revelation comes out of what is dark. Mm. Yeah. You cannot come up with electricity unless people are in darkness. Mm. You want to light up the place. So your idea to come up with electricity came out of darkness. Mm. It didn't come out of light. You would not invite, invent light if there was already light. <laughs> you see? Makes sense. You create... Yeah problems, uh -huh. I mean you create solutions yeah. based on problems. Yes, so that solution was inside, inside the problem. The problem. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why you don't run away from problems, because it brings a solution with it. Mm -hmm. yeah? Deal with a problem and you, you'll, the, the solution it carried with it will be handed over to you. Mm -hmm. Isn't that beautiful? Okay, I think we've got to stop there. Uh, Absalom says, I wish our preachers could watch this. Oh man. <laughs> yeah? That's the Bible says, I wish above all else. So your wish is wonderful. Yeah, they will. That's why we put these things on YouTube so that many years to come, people can still watch them. Mm. All right, blessings, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. We interpreted only one dream, <laughs> but I think we helped a lot of people in the I understanding of Scripture. Yeah. Mm. I, I should carry on with this next Tuesday. Mm. Just to expound on it more. So when people read the Bible, they have a more sure word of prophecy. Mm. Yeah. Remember, to recap, if it is talking damnation, it's not yours, because you're a child of God, you're not damned. If it is talking hell, it's not yours, because hell was created for Satan and his demons, mm. his fallen angels. No human being was ever created for hell. If it's talking a curse, not you, because you're blessed forevermore. All right? Curses don't work against God's children, mm. unless they activate those curses using their own lips. In which case, if a child wants to burn their finger and they insist, it's not the parent burning them. Mm. They are burning themselves. Yeah. You see? So anything that's negative in the word of God is not for you. If God says, I will punish them, then you're not God's enemy, you are his mm. child. So let those who are God's enemies read that and get scared, not you. <laughs> okay? If you have any form of respect for God, the smallest amount, then there's nothing negative in the Bible written for you. What if you are making mistakes all the time? then good news is for you. Mm. Because the gospel came for those who have sinned. Mm. You see? So how can you escape? How can you escape God's goodness? Blessed are the poor in spirit. Yes. How can you escape? People escape God's goodness because of ignorance. So they become angry with God. Mm. They have this notion that God is out to get them. When it's the devil masquerading as you, God is out to destroy the devil and his you know, his destiny is already sealed. But not you. Mm. He cares for you too much to cast you into hell. He cares for you too much for you to fail. So trust in him. This next year, you're going to be a success. You will, and you will understand scripture. From now onwards, read the Bible as food, as water. Read it as life. The Bible says in Proverbs 4 verse 20, if you read up to 23, uh, and I summarize that, the word of God is life, to those who find them, and health to all their flesh. Now, if you read a medical book, you're not going to get healed. Mm. A medical book that teaches you how to heal a certain disease. Mm. Just reading won't heal you. But if you read the Word of God that says the Word is life to those who find them, and health to all their flesh, you get healed. Mm. Because wow. it's life. Mm. That's what makes it different from an academic book. Mm. Mm. Yeah? If the Word says it, it's it. If a scientific book says it, you still have to go and do. You shouldn't have to go and cut somebody and give them a certain con, you know, concoction for them to be well. But the word of God, if it says healed, it is healing itself. Mm. If the word of God says prospered, it is prosperity itself. If the word of God says peace, it's peace itself. Mm. So it is what it says it is. So if the word of God says damned, it's damnation. Mm. But you're not damned, you're a child of God. Mm. He's too loving to damn you. Okay? Wow. Isn't that wonderful? Powerful. So nobody should ever, ever run away from Jesus. He's too caring and too loving, too sincere, too honest, too good to be ignored. Mm -hmm. And if you've had the wrong news, then that was not the gospel. All right, I see a few 
messages here. Absalom says, my brother, you have explained how we are related well. My brother, you bring me close to God day by day. A true prophet you are. Thank you so much. You are amazing. Do you know? Do you know he named his daughter after my wife? Nice. Uh, because he really loves my wife, yeah. The daughter is called Madam Moss. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Rhonda says, God richly bless you both. Thank you so much for blessing me. Amen. Amen. Now get rid of any form of guilt and condemnation. Evelyn says, Thank you, Lord. If you're feeling guilty, just know it's not God that brought it. You know who, who is always guilty? The devil. Yeah. Yeah. So if you feel guilty, it came from the devil. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter what you've done. Guilt never changed a man. Mm. But good news can change you. Mm. What makes a child calm down? It's not threat. Yeah. It is comfort. Oh, it's okay, baby. It's all right. Don't cry. That's what makes them calm down. Mm. But if you say, if you keep crying, I'm going to beat you. You hit the child, they cry even more. <laughs> Do you see? Mm. When you were growing up, they would say, if you cry, you'd be thrown out there for hyenas to bite you. But we still cried anyway. <laughs> You see, well, you know when your power is, you're full of threats. Yeah. <laughs> you're joking around with me. I'm going to crush your head. And in that moment, you can't even punch. <laughs> you know, when you were growing up, we used to draw lines. Cross when, that. Yeah. If you're strong, cross that line. Well, you know, once he crosses it, you're off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> the moment the guy crosses the line, <laughs> you're running, <laughs> calling your mother. Mama! <laughs> So the strong one was really your mother. <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. Pastor Nathan from Langata, God bless you so much. We are so glad to have you with us. All right. Evelyn says, wow, wise encouragement. I'm blessed too. Okay, we've got to go now. Um, I'll be seeing you tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll be back to Nairobi. We've been here in a beautiful city called Nainuki, close to Mount Kenya. Wonderful place. Really, really beautiful. The scenery is beautiful. Uh, the city is clean, man. It's so clean. Yes. We, we went and <clears throat> looked around. It's just beautiful. You, you would have thought you are still in Nairobi. Mm -hmm. Their malls are beautiful and all yeah. that. Yeah, it's really, really nice. And they have a beautiful airstrip that they're expanding now. It's going to be great. Wow. So Absalom says, God, the word of God heals. Nobody should run away from God. The key word this night I have, I have to preach for my family. Wow. Don't run away from God. He loves you. Robert Omua, HSC, following from Nyahera Kisumu, Kenya. God bless you. So glad to have you with us. Please go back and watch what we have been talking about because we are signing off right now. See you tomorrow. I'll be teaching on family, marriage, relationships, also based on the understanding of God's Word. And God's Word works all the time. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.